Hello and welcome to episode two of making our K bar clone. Push the milk can that was sitting on out of the way. So here's where we're at. I polished it out to 400, kind of roughly, but just to get that nice smooth surface that we'd have on a very nice finished knife. But you can still see some small little nicks and scrapes in here, which won't be too bad because I'll have to polish it again once I get um, the fuller in. So it's going to get another polishing job anywho. But I got a chunk of steel cut out, and this is going to be the guard. I made sure that it had a nice fit up and that it was solid. I've got this chunk of hydraulic steel. This I think is used to make fittings for hydraulics. I don't know exactly what for, um, but it all I know is it came from a place that manufactured hydraulics, but we're going to cut off a about a one eh, half, three quarter inch. Somewhere in that range. Uh, chunk of this. Drill some holes in it to mount as our pummel. And then I got a box full of scrap leather. These old gloves. One of them has rips in it and they're worn pretty thin. Oh yeah, that one has a hole. Granted, it's not that big of a hole, but everything else is just kind of ratty looking on them. But the good thing is, is nobody will see that because this is where the glue goes. So I've got two gloves worth, a whole bunch of random chunks. That one probably could be used for something else. But stuff like this and like this, there's all um, pieces like this. This is one of the thick nine ounces. This will be a lot of this and it'll make it real easy. And there's some of this real thin brown stuff. So that I'll have to start cutting out and just stacking on. What that'll basically entail is I get this cut out into our ovate shape which I'll probably just do on the, the bench grinder. So I have something to rest this on and make sure that that ovate shape comes out really nice. And then what I'll do is I'll take this, trace an outline on say like this piece, trace the outline of the oval, and then cut a whole bunch of them because that'll end up being the central portion because we need a big swell in there and then I'll cut a whole bunch of them in descending order of size so that I can get more out of the pieces that I have and uh, not have as much to grind away so that we can have that oval the oval swell in the center and then go down to the pummel and then we'll get it all glued up so I'm going to go get working on this, get this cleaned up in both forward and back dimensions, or I have no idea why I said that, but the front and the back, clean them up. And then I will scribe an oval and we will cut that out. Okay, I'll come back. Quick tip for holding small pieces like this guard section in place while hand sanding, especially if you have the slot for the tang to go through, just stick a little nail in on each side to hold it from going back and forth and to slightly hold it from coming up. 
then is just nailed right down in place. You can sand right on top of it. It won't move too, too far. I think we'll only go up to probably 220, maybe 240 on the guard and leave it kind of a, kind of a satin finish to help contrast with um, contrast with the guard. So I'm going to get on that, see how fast we can get this done. Okay, we've got leather here. Now what I did is I just took the guard and just traced out the guard and cut leather to an approximate setup because it'll have to be a little bit smaller than the guard in all of the dimensions. But this gave me a little bit of leeway that some of these, like some of these small pieces down here that are way smaller than the rest of the, these pieces here are the right size for the start of the handle. And it'll get shrunk down a little bit more oval shaped. This is just here because I didn't get to cutting it off. I started cutting a little bit. But there is a big thing about how these are put on, which is gonna be necessary if we use epoxy, like Gorilla Epoxy, because it sets in five minutes. If we try to put epoxy into every single section, because I've got a bunch of um, different size or different thickness of leather, it's not all one thickness, and there's a bunch of uh, glove uh, leather in here. So this is like half ounce leather. Uh, some of this is about nine ounce. That's a nine ounce. There's a a six ounce piece of leather because this is just all scraps and the, the leather I used was out of one glove one of those gloves so there's not a lot of uh, time to work with your epoxy you got five minutes before it starts turning into a gel so this is extremely important when you have your leather Make sure that when you tighten it down, it is very difficult to push it back once you've got a decent stack on there and you can bash it down. So that means that while these ones are very loose, that's because they are at the thinnest end possible. So these ones come off pretty easy, but even these ones, you can see they're really tight. It takes a lot to push them off. And that's going to be paramount for getting a good solid fit because that means we can set this up. I'm going to drive it into this little chunk of wood to where it'll stand mostly upright. I'll have to clamp it a little bit. But as it's standing upright, I can mix up glue and glue on the guard and then I can glue on each individual piece and just keep going as fast as I can. And when I get to a point where the glue's starting to get a little bit tacky, then I can take a hammer and a piece of wood or something that's been drilled out with a slot like this and hammer the heck out of it. Because then that'll squish everything down and compress it against the tang. And then I can continue, I can mix up another batch of epoxy and continue putting pieces of leather on and mushing them down so that they'll be hard and it'll be under its own compression as it's drying. And then once I get to the top, since all of these are very light and they don't want to stick very well, then I can have the pummel that will get a little bit of a extra cleaning up here. It needs to get laid down and surfaced a little bit because it's lopsided and I'm going to take off uh, all of the edges. Just an extra disclaimer, this is not going to look exactly like a K-bar. This is going to be a facsimile of a K-bar. That's why I'm not calling it making a K-bar, but making a K-bar clone. 
just so people uh, don't go crazy. This is not going to be a K-Bar. It is a Backwoods Brooks Knives knife that looks like a K-Bar. So, just to let you rem just to remind you about that for anybody who might think, well, that doesn't look like a K-Bar. Well, it's not supposed to look exactly like a K-Bar. This is hand forged. So, this is a different size than this. So, I am going to <clears throat> clean up the faces here. This one is off as well. Cut the angles off here and round it out a little bit. And then add some bevels on... Actually, what might be kind of cool is if I just cut off... This is a hexagonal chunk of steel. I'll just cut off each of the sides and make a 12-sided chunk of steel and then just uh, taper around the edge. That might look cool. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and then I will bring you back probably once it's glued. I'll show you how I've figured out how to clamp blades like this. Okay. Okay, so here it is all glued up. It has dried. And it's solid in there. And this is how I have it set up. I've got the point driven into a block of wood. I've got a block up top that is compressing the pummel. And there's a hole in here so that the tang can come through. And then I've just got this pipe clamp clamping it all together. So all I gotta do is undo this so I can pop that off, set it off to the side. This should just peel right off the top. It does. There's some nasties that leaked over and we've got enough of the tang popping out and that'll make a nice peened over, peened over tang. The pummel itself is just a tad off kilter, but it's not too bad. It's because I didn't use the drill press to drill these holes, which was a, a problem. Now, let me... Well, at least we know the tip's good. Come on out of there. There we go. So that's what we got right now. So the next step is going to be to take a very sharp knife and cut away as much of this as I can so that we're not sitting there burning up the leather with the angle grinder when we start to grind this smooth so that we can put in the ridges where the uh for extra grip so i'm going to get onto that and i will come back when i'm done okay so there again not quite a k-bar handle but at least it's comfortable what we're going to do now is we're going to put in some scallops. I've started one right there. We're going to do one every half inch. So there will be eight of them down the length of this handle. And to do that, we'll just use a chainsaw file to file in. And we'll just pick one of the individual pieces of leather as a guide to take us all the way around and file that out. And I think I'll file to about half of this thickness, half of this file's thickness. And then we will be very close to being done. 
You just have to run over this with a probably 120 grit sandpaper to try to get all of the heavy scratches out of it. And then we'll uh, clean this tape off. That was for trying to protect uh, the pommel. It didn't quite help, but we didn't get too much in there. That was uh, nasties. So then we'll peen and then we'll sharpen and then we will start with the first test, which would be weighing it. And I think I will end up, I'll show you what happens when we're done here. And then I think I'll cut off the video and make this the part two. And then part three will be the first test. And then part four will be when we put in the fullers and do test two. So I will come back when I am done and we'll see what happens next. Okay, one more step. Let me get you back in the light. That is the blade ready to be sharpened and oil put on the handle. We've got a nice peen on our tang. We've got the handle all nice and compressed and it will work well. We've got some leather oil. I think it's neem oil, but uh, we're going to use that and I'm going to use an old Harbor Freight sharpening block and some WD-40 to get that all sharpened up. And I'll bring you back. Okay. It is done. This is a final look before I am gone for two weeks and I don't have anything to do. So if this video comes out afterward, uh, my apologies, but there we go. Not quite a K-bar, but a good enough facsimile, excuse me, can't speak, that we can do some pretty good tests. It's got a good grip, nice spine. Cool. It is very cool. <clears throat> so, I will not be around for two weeks, so... This will be it for right now. When I get back, we will do the tests. It's Backwoods Brooks, signing off.